Hello website, this is Fahad from Fisher Phones and today we are fixing a MacBook Air motherboard. This is a slightly liquid damaged motherboard. Someone has already worked on the BIOS, I don't know for what reasons and uh, we can see there is some flux marks on the BIOS here. This area has been reworked. So there is some flux marks here. Maybe they tried to clean it or rewrite the BIOS. Uh, I have no idea what happened to this motherboard previously but uh, there has been an attempt to repair this motherboard so then it came to us for repair and uh, we are trying to fix it now uh, let's go and check some basic signals what we have observed now is uh, there is some basic voltages are not available on this board do not have a light on the DC connector so this is the first voltage which is the PP3V42 voltage and if we do not get PP3V42 then we will not get the PP bus G3 hot and uh, this is the first signal or first voltage PP3V42 that we need to make and once this is generated then it will help generate PP bus G3 hot you will have your 3 volt at the coil and you will have your 5 volt at the coil and uh, you will get your core voltage uh, which is usually 1.8 volt the first voltage is the PP3V42 voltage then that's the first voltage that's generated and once you have PP3V42 voltage and at that point you should have the light on this connector so this is the first voltage and this is missing let's check pp3v42 where we can check it and what is the situation in this area this is our schematics for this motherboard is uh, 00165 board here you can see and uh, what we need to do is we need to go and check this part first sir j7000 this is the entry point for the voltages that we are giving through the dc jack and in this area you can see that we are generating 3.42 voltage as well and this is the first voltage that is generated and once you have this voltage then you have a green light at the DC jack uh, to make this voltage the first volt uh, that is coming through this positive line is uh, at point number one and two it is called PPDC in and which is here PPDC and G3 hot and this is a 16.4 voltage and this is coming through the DC uh, power supply that we have connected so PPDC and G3 hot connects to R7012 and through this voltage divider it generates a gate pass uh, this is a P channel MOSFET so let's say your 16.4 comes to the uh, source part of this uh, MOSFET then gate supply will be lower than 16.4 it could be anything 3.2 4.7 7.0 but it can't be uh, anywhere near 16 or 16 voltage so anything lower than 16.4 will work in, in this section here as a gate supply and then you have a, a zero diode here so in case if you have a higher voltage comes let's say your 23 volt comes here or 30 volts come here then this zeta diode will break and your all your current will come here and it will save your board from the higher current so this is just a safety measure here after that your voltage that comes past this uh, MOSFET Q7010 um, this is named as PPDC in G3H or G3 hot underscore I soul so this power is used to generate 3.42 volt and through this dual diode it is used as a win and then here should be another um, yeah there should be something else as well so this uh, this is the feedback line here and this is the the biasing line on this one and we should have a shutdown this basically this is acting as a enable pin here so this voltage will come here it will enable this di uh, this ic and it will generate pp3v42 here after this l7095 here and this coil so 
this is uh, all the theory behind PP3V42 and this is the first voltage that we will look at and uh, if we can check L7095 so we should receive 3.42 if we don't then this is the first voltage we should be looking at so let's see if we are receiving PP3V42 and I'll take you to the microscope first so at this coil which is here we should receive PP3V42 okay and we are not receiving anything so the entry point for this 16.4 uh, is here so we can check quickly here if 16.4 is coming to this DC jack can check. we are receiving 16.4 there on the multimeter you can see that so I'll just power it off now C connect this cable again so our entry for the 16.4 volt is correct so this is your DC in 16.4 voltage we checked here and after that we are supposed to check this resistor here that is this receiving PPDC in G3 hot and then we have a big capacitor here so we can check here also that we are receiving this 16.4 and this is going here PPDC in G3 hot this is the MOSFET again you can see Q7010 so we just need to check here that is our voltage coming here so this is the MOSFET view uh, we were talking about here and I can literally see where the problem is well, I'll just for the sake of this video I'll show you what happens here okay so after the DC jack the voltage comes here it connects to this resistor here you can see you should have 16.4 here power it on And we have 16.4 here and then we have another 16.4 here what we are missing is this resistor here you can see since this resistor is not here we are not getting the gate power supply because the wind voltage is okay this is the VIN show you so this resistor is uh, this is the R7011 so you can see this is the 10 kilo ohm resistor this is missing so our voltage is coming here but it's not generating um, a voltage divi divider voltage here which is on pin number 4 of this MOSFET so if we see here pin number 4 is here so we should receive some voltage here after the voltage divider and this MOSFET should switch on and let this power go to the this section which is the PPDC and G3 hot ISOL. So if this voltage divider is not working, your voltage will not go past here. So let's check here what is the situation in the microscope. I think it's going to be the shortest repair ever. Okay. So what we were looking at was this. we will be looking at two resistors capacitor and at this is the gate power supply section so at this you see there is no voltages here but well, one thing to note is uh, my ampere increases as soon as I touch here my red probe and you see I have a light also you see we have a light I don't know if you are looking at it let's see are you in the microscope yes you are so as soon as I touched my multimeter we have a light here also what happened in here actually when I connected my red prop to this capacitor uh, this one I'll show you where I was talking about here when I connected my red prop here so multimeter has some voltages and these voltages went into this capacitor 
and this IC sense is a p-channel MOSFET so it can work on a very small uh, voltage anything lower than 16.4 it is gonna work and this capacitor has capacity as well so when I connect my multimeter uh, multimeters red probe here so this capacitor fills up with electrons and that's why it, it, you know this IC starts working but that is not right thing because uh, this will eventually when the the electron dissipate from this uh, ca capacitor then this IC is not going to work let's fix it I know what to do with this one and once uh, we put this resistor then we will have a proper gate supply let me grab uh, a donor board and uh, then we will see what we can do this is a donor board so there is two resistors here in this one we have one resistor only and the voltage divider is not working in this uh, section so we will just remove this uh, resistor and put it down there and hopefully uh, PP3V42 will generate and then we can check further that if we need to work any more on this board what other things are faulty on this board okay so where are you now <laughs> We got this resistor and uh, we'll stick it here in one of my previous videos I explained that you know if, if you are in the same business and you have a problem that you put an IC and it just disappears as soon as you bring the hot air station in so this is the trick you can use always uh, you can put some flux in and then drop your IC in, in the flux and uh, Hopefully it's not gonna go anywhere. We'll just stay there. So we put this resistor in now. That's good. And uh, just clean it a little bit. Before I do anything, I'll just check the value of this resistor if it is fine. So it's a 10 kilo ohm resistor so is this the one we were looking for 10 kilo ohm yes 10 kilo ohm resistor is good for this let's test now okay we have a green light okay wait what happened we have a green light <laughs> 